Freaksters here, back with a DCS video. This time I am covering a mod that is completely free, and it's a very well-developed mod called the A4E Skyhawk mod. And the link in the description below is how you can install and run this said mod. I personally recommend, though, that you do the DCS standalone open beta so you can have access to a multiplayer server where you can fly around with other people having this mod in a co-op environment. And, and also in this video, I will show some tips I have learned through not just the Vietnam co-op server, but also some tips I learned from fellow squadron mates of the FF squad. So let's get started. All right, so in the multiplayer, the server you are looking for, which I have marked as favorite, so I don't lose track of it. So the server that you're looking for is the Vietnam War A-4E Skyhawk required. You can just type in here to make it easier in the search function, the Vietnam or VI and it'll, this would be the correct server. Now, this same community also runs a Korea War one, but that requires either renting or buying the F-86 Sabre, for example, or renting a helicopter that is compatible with that server. The, you can also join their Discord as well. And that's all you have to do after that is I would recommend starring it, so that way you can easily find it, and then just hit join. Okay, so what this server allows you to do is you can fly a PvE environment, where occasionally you also face bot MiG-19s and 21s in the A4 Skyhawk. Luckily it's not brutal, but you can find that. Along with F5Es and P47s. <laughs> as well, but most of it is F-86, F-5Es, and A-4, the mod that we're using. So I would recommend, if you want to learn to taxi and have an easier time at least take it off in terms of runway distance, to click on any of the ones that don't say CV-59. CV-59 requires knowledge of learning how to hook up the aircraft to the catapult pad that lifts your aircraft off into the air. So you click left click on that. The any one of these will do, just as long as you don't click on the player that already is in that slot will do. So pretty much the other thing I would recommend in DCS in general is to make sure you click on unit type and you can see in alphabetical order what's available. So we hit briefing. And in the briefing, this is a unique server. So basically, long story short of what that is, is once you have your plane refilled and rearmed, you press a certain buttons of keystrokes to get a mission that allows you to fly the plane. And the only thing, if you want to just do a basic learning in a multiplayer environment, just scroll down all the way to the bottom and you'll see this QFE that is not Quiznos forever. I thought that's what it originally meant. And I just said with shop that's no longer with us. This is how you set a altitude dial to be more accurate for that particular airfield that you spawn from. Okay. So. The first thing you can do is you can press F2. And you can have this function on the server. If you're using a joystick with a non hold test setup with mouse and keyboard as your view and control functions, you can pretty much uh, use this to help taxi if you're new, because the taxi in this plane is complicated, which I'll get into shortly. The first thing you want to do is press escape and adjust your controls here. Quick thing you want to do, just to make it a little easier to control, is to go under access commands and you want to scroll all the way down to roll. Now, regardless of what function you use for pitch and rudder, you want to access tune 
roll. And the reason why you want to do that is this aircraft is extremely agile in the roll left and right axis command. If you do not use a saturation value and you have like a janky joystick like I'm currently using, <laughs> it is extremely sensitive to input on left and right once you're airborne. So to counter that, you go to saturation Y and lower that from the default 100 to about maybe 50 to 70. And curvature, which shows this nice blue line curve, allows for more gradual input, but you lose top end sensitivity. So you don't want to set the curvature too high. I would recommend going between 5 to 15. And then you click OK. For pitch, for axis tune, I just only did a very slight gentle curve. Everything else is default. That is your up and down motion. And rudder, with axis tune. I made a steeper curve for the rudder. That's just because of my controller setup bindings I use. And invert will be in a future video of how I got that to work. Because I use a very weird oddball setup that I learned from this server. Now, the last binding you want to do is when you type in the search menu wheel, you need wheel brake on, else off, wheel brake left on, else off, and wheel brake right on, else off. This aircraft in particular is extremely sensitive to inputs on the wheel braking. It does not have nose wheel steering. So what that means is it pretty much will collapse on itself if you're not too careful with the throttle input. The rudder is not very effective. You can use it a little bit below 50 knots maneuvering wise on the ground, but it most you're entirely dependent on using a combination of braking left and right and the manual brakes at the same time while manipulating your throttle. It is very hard to get used to. <laughs> Trust me, and I've flown, well, in the virtually flown World War II aircraft that were easier to taxi than this. It is probably the hardest thing you can do in this thing. So you press OK after you set that. And the next thing you can do is to hit the backslash key, which on the English keyboard is between the enter and backspace. And you'll get this menu that says ATC to exit. You want ground crew. You press F8. And then once you press F8, you want to do F2, which is ground electric power. And you press F1 to turn on the ground power. This plane does not have a battery system that allows it to do a lot of its functions. And then you get a Star Trek yellow torpedo system that magically disappears once you're done with the engine startup process. So we'll press F1 to get in the cockpit here. Okay, now that we're in the cockpit, the main gauges you want to pay attention to required to engine startup is the percent RPM and the engine telemetry, which is the 1 through 10, which is right here, directly to the right. Fuel flow is for when the engine's running in the air. Fuel quantity is important for when the engine's actually running. That's in terms of thousands of pounds. Six is maximum. Three is about average, for example. And if we go over to the bottom left corner here to start the engine, you can use the mouse for this because it's a full fidelity cockpit. Otherwise, I joke we call full fiddly. You press this big button that says start. It will say engine starter switch. Left click that once. And now you notice this engine is spinning up. Now that it's between the 0 and 10, Right click this big stick looking thing that looks like a throttle lever once. And now it's going to the next phase. 
You wait till this percentage thing goes between the 10 and the 20. Right click it once again on the main throttle position lock. Now the engine is primed. So what does that mean? That basically means that it will go from 20 to 55%, which is this red line looking thing on the percent gauge. If it hovers at 55, that means your engine is operational. There we go. It is operational. And if you want to know for sure, just press F2 on this server. And you'll see at the bottom middle of your screen, it'll say RPM 55%. That is the default idle speed for the A4 Skyhawk. Now we press F1 to go back in. Press the backslash key between the backspace and enter on the English keyboard. F8 ground crew. Ground electric power. F2 for off. And then you'll say turn off the ground power. And then it will do a Star Trek disappear. There we go. See? It entered the teleportation tub, hub and now they're no longer there. <laughs> so that's basically how you can tell when the electric power is off. So, just for simplicity's sake, you can... You don't need to refill and rearm for this session. Just left click this canopy close lever, which is towards the bottom left panel, which says canopy. Left click that once. And then it's locked. One brief thing about the canopy. If you want to refill and rearm, regardless if the engine is running or not, it must be open. If you close this and you want to refill and rearm, they will not do their job because of a game coding thing. And also it's kind of sort of realistic, I guess. Next thing you want to do is near the bottom left corner near the canopy is this oxygen switch. I've clicked that on so you can go to higher altitudes without passing out. Next thing, over here, you see the flaps. Now, I have a custom binding here when I press the escape key and I go to adjust controls, I type in the word flap. This does not have a stopper, meaning that if you press and hold the button depending on your binding, it will continuously go all the way down and all the way up. Not necessarily something you always want. So to counter this, set your binding to handle down else stop. That means you have to press and hold it, and as soon as you let go of the button, it stops itself. Same thing for retracting. You want to do press and hold down the up button and if you let go of it, it stops. For takeoff, under normal circumstances, since this is lightweight, you don't need to do this step, but it's good to know. So you press and hold down the flaps down button to about the halfway point. And when I let go of the button, it stops. That's how you can tell when it's working. One other neat little trick near the center of your console you can't do this in real life, but it would be pretty hilarious. You can fly this aircraft without this annoying stick in the way. If you hit left alt C by default to have the mouse unlocked, and you right click towards the bottom, it disappears. Look at that. You can actually see what's in front of it. This is bombs, rockets, and an armament switch area, which I will not describe in this video, because that will be for another video. One last thing before taxiing is to set the trim control. When you type in the word trim under search, you'll see for rudder trim switch, left and right, left wing down, left right wing down, that's for roll. Nose down and up is very important. That's the most important bindings you want, followed by the rudder, and then if you need arrow on, you can bind it for arrow on as well. Also, optionally, you may need to set a trim reset switch to hold. That also can help, too. And you click OK. And recommended for the nose, if you move the camera to the top right bottom panel, 
You'll see nose that's up and down. For takeoff, the recommendation is usually between 4 to 10. I usually do 6. 4, I think, is too low for the nose, even at this light weight. You need that for takeoff. If you want to be more proper towards the bottom right left corner, you can arm the spoiler for ground takeoffs that don't involve the carrier catapult. But you can arm that if you want. Just be careful that that will make your aircraft behave a little weird as well. Another button towards the bottom left corner, optional, you can skip this if you want, is to set the AFCS standby switch to standby. It's good practice to at least have. So that way you have a form of a stability autopilot once you're airborne. Same thing with stability augmentation that dampens your up and down motion. The out off and engage off are used in the air. This is your altitude and attitude hold switch that allows you to stay stable. But you have to make sure your pitch and controls are more centered because if you do that before you make it more stable it can get really weird on you. This is a heads up. Now we're ready for taxiing. Okay, for taxiing, just for ease of simplicity, start in F2 view. And for the engine RPM, you want to gradually increase to about between 70 to 80 percent. And have your fingers ready on the left and right real brakes with the main brakes. Your plane will start rolling usually around 70% at light weight. You may use the rudder a little bit, but it does not uh, really help too much. But it is an optional thing you can do. Uh, holding down the left wheel brake release function to do this turn along with using a little bit of rudder. You do not want to purely idle your aircraft, meaning that you don't want to go from 70 to 55. The lowest you want to be at is between 65 to 75, if you want to keep moving. And if you feel like you're going too fast, do the all-wheel stop brake function. Just to slow it down a bit, you'll be relying on these brakes a lot in this aircraft when taxiing. And I might be saying, what's with the weird spoiler looking things in front of your wings? What does those do? Those help with stall and are usually deployed at low airspeed to prevent stalls in the air. Right now we're on the ground so they don't really do much. And for now, we're just going to taxi to the runway. I recommend for the speed to not really go much faster than say 35 kilometers in a straight line or IAS indicated if you're in F2 view. Just because it gets really derpy past 35, it gets really uncontrollable if you're trying to tax. So I'm going to slow down here with the main wheel brakes, turn, use main wheel brakes, turn, harder. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't make that turn, so I'm going to actually just go to the left. And I'll see you on the runway, because it's usually... At least in a straight line, pretty stable once you get the brake part down. It takes a lot of practice though. So I'll see you there. You generally want to allow it a little bit of forward momentum and then counter steer with the opposite brake. Meaning that if you're turning really hard to the left and need to straighten out, gradually tap and release the right wheel brake if doing a left turn. If you're doing a right turn, you gradually tap and release or rapidly tap while manipulating the throttle, in this case. Because in my case, I'm going to hit the ground to death. Oh no. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. I jokingly call it the ground to death, because in this game, you touch the grass like that, it's game over, and you have to start again. So, I'll start over again. And I'll see you at the takeoff part for the last part of the video. Now that we taxied, taxied all the way uh, down to here, there was one important thing I did notice a pattern of, at least in F2 view. These brakes are not anti-lock or anti-skid. So if you press and hold down the brakes too hard, 
the wheel actually starts scraping along the ground and not actually doing much. And for taxiing forward to keep the front wheel, which is a castering wheel, upright, it takes a little bit of practice getting the camera view in the way you want it in F2 view to get this wheel to go a little more straight, like that. I mean, that's the best I'm going to be able to do for this video. So, go back to F1 cockpit view. The next thing to do is to make sure to double check that the nose trim is between 4 to 10. In this case, I have it at 6 or just about 6 for the out nose up position. My AFCS is on standby for if I want to use it in the air. And the flaps are at least at or just below half to allow for an easier takeoff speed. Because this plane's a delta wing, so it requires more speed. And for the speed, it's measured in terms of knots. It goes from 8, which is 80, to 600. Most of the time, you'll be cruising between the, 100, the 15 to 430. Sorry, I thought I said 40. It's 30, which is 150 to 300 knots is the usual cruising speed of this aircraft. So let's get started with the takeoff. So I hold down the main wheel brakes, gradually increase the throttle, and get ready to have your feet on your foot pedals or whatever you use for your rudder. Go to 100%. Let go of the main wheel brakes. Use the left and right wheel brakes here with a little bit of rudder because now it actually will be useful it's a little bit tricky to do in the oh uh oh well oh oh no i'm not gonna think i'm gonna be able to save this sometimes that can happen too all right so i can just retract blinding gear of the default g i don't know how i saved that don't ask me how and then retract the flaps Gradually, with the full engine power, and then gradually trim the nose downwards, so you're not pitching up and down like a bucking bronco. And there you have it, a very uh, dangerous takeoff in the A4 Skyhawk. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, just to quick demonstrate the roll while I'm wrapping this up. I do run a Ko-Fi page if you wish to support the channel. The goal of getting a better flight stick so I don't have these goofy happy accidents, I guess, as often. And I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first time I did a video coverage on a very popular free-to-play mod. Links for this mod will be in the description below. And this is Rickster's Journey, signing off.